I am trying to make an adapter here. And I'm going to do that by taping a bunch of these things together. And if I can get them all together, I can proceed with this video. There is an easier alternative, uh, these DuPont headers. I have seven position headers here that I could just, you know, use instead. But I think for most people, you're just going to have these little connector wires. Probably got them out of some kind of like an Arduino kit or something. So I want to do this in a manner that is accessible. For most people okay so now comes the moment where I said I wanted to make this as accessible as possible and it becomes inaccessible my box of many things related to programming blade controllers uh, in here I have an assortment of pogo pins what I need to do is find one that fits in here pogo pin is just a pin that has a spring-loaded end to it makes connecting to things via contacts on the PCB easier. And I think that's going to work. I think that's going to be the choice. Because it feels like it's fitting, but just barely. So I'm going to need seven of them. So four, five, Six, seven. Now these things are pretty delicate. I need to be very careful here. There we go. And because they're spring-loaded, even though the headers here, the connectors I'm using, are a little out of alignment, that's okay. The spring travel will make up for those tiny misalignments. There is my adapter. Very good. Ah, but the other end, the other end, what am I doing with that? Well, I need that. And I need this, my chip programmer. And that's going to go in there. Oops. Like that. And then I will plug these wires in into the appropriate spots. But what spots are appropriate? And what are we doing here? Ah, well, let's get to the meat and potatoes of this video. At the Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World, there is the Tron Light Cycle Run uh, roller coaster. And if you exit through the gift shop, as you should, you will find these things. And these are identity chips. What are identity chips? Well, they plug into this, an identity disc. Uh, it's a Bluetooth speaker that's also sold in the gift shop, along with, uh, separately, a backpack that this will clip onto, which is kind of neat. And you can put the identity chips into your disc and you will hear different clips, audio clips from the movie um, Tron Legacy of the characters that these identity uh, chips are from or for. Anyways, uh, the socket for that is right there. And well, here's one that I've already taken apart. And that's how it goes, just right in there, like so. And the fact that I've taken it apart and you can actually see the bare PCB underneath might give you some idea now as to what's going on, along with perhaps this particular PCB here, which looks an awful lot like the identity chip. And hey, you know what? I think it fits as well. Oh yeah, it does. Look at that. Inside the identity chip is just an SPI flash memory chip. It's the same thing uh, that is used in 
droid personality chips except the chips in these are, are of a different form factor they're very very small very very thin so they can fit inside these uh, identity chips it's kind of neat uh, but if you take one out you will find that on the other side here it actually lists exactly what each one of these connectors these contact pads is for so it'll tell you which one's the power the ground the clock signal the data signal and all that stuff and I use that to design a replacement chip and uh, I've put all the signals marked them all on the PCB so I'm going to use this as a reference point and what I'm going to do is again using this as a reference point wire the other end up to the appropriate pin here on my programmer so that I can then dump the contents of all these personality chips or identity chips that just came. So I need to set this up. And the idea is when I grab the chip here, I'm just going to take my program leads here and just push them down onto the contact pads like so. While holding this down, the other end goes into here and I'll be able to read the chips that are in these identity chips, the flash chips, and dump them. That's the plan. So let us do this now. This is the side that's going to be exposed. The side with the notch like that. So I've cleverly put the markings on the opposite side. So I'm going to have to flip them. And I will wire it up to this like it's a 8-pin SPI flash chip. It doesn't really matter um, what type of SPI flash chip it is as long as it's a 4-pin chip. You can find any of them online. Find the data sheet for one their pinouts are all going to match. So let's get to this. Right protect, going from the out in, going opposite directions. So outside is right protect, right protect goes to pin three. Like so, just jam that in. Okay, the next one is ground. Ground is pin four. And I don't need to use this uh, this uh, socket. I just find it's a little bit easier because when I pull all these wires out when I'm done, I, I'm going to lose the, the setup here. And if I keep the socket, I'll save the setup. I could have also created like a little PCB to do this, but why bother? Data out. Data out is pin 2. Chip select is purple. That is pin 1. All right. Clock is blue, clock goes into six. Green is power, that is eight. And five is data input. And what we're missing here is the hold pin. Uh, I'm gonna leave it empty for now because I've found it this fine if I leave it empty. So that's the wiring done. Uh, the next step is to open up one of these chips and read it and see what happens. So the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to actually grab a new chip. Here is the chip. There is a C on the PCB there. Does that mean that this is a clue? Yes. Good. All right. So we know right protect, which is the thin uh, one is right there. So I'm going to make contact like so, hold it in place, and let's see if this can detect it. It did. Now I'll click read. Ignore the missing pins. And that looks like a good dump. FF, FF00, that's the color. Uh, when you put the chip in, the Bluetooth speaker has LEDs in it that will change color. Those three bytes identify the color, red, green, and blue. And suddenly, the mic quality gets better. I am going to save this bin file that I have um, dumped from the identity chip. I will name it Clue. And if you go to GitHub, I have a 
small repository here with a couple of Python scripts that will dump the contents of an identity chip uh, ROM as well as create a new ROM with a bunch of WAV files that you send to it. And there's not a lot of documentation here. This is just a quickie thing, so I could start playing around with this stuff. But if this is something you're interested in, here is where you can get a start on things. So I'm in the directory where I saved that bin file. And I also have my two Python scripts here. And I am going to dump the, uh, the ROM that we just uh, saved. And we now have uh, seven audio files that came off of that identity chip. And you could put all of those back into a different ROM file if you wanted. Um, for example, I'll put all the clue files we just dumped back into this new ROM. We'll call it clue2.bin but now I can pass it a different color. So if I don't want the disk to turn yellow when I plug in the clue ROM, if I want it to turn, I don't know, purple or magenta, you know, I could do full red and no green and half blue. And now I have clue2.bin, which is the new ROM. And why are they different sizes? That's a fine question and something I'm going to have to look at to see if maybe my code is missing a little something. I could burn this onto that chip that we just uh, you know, dumped from, put it back in the uh, identity disk, and it would show up as magenta, or whatever color that is, on the identity disk. But that's enough for now. I just wanted to show you some work that I've been doing for the last month or so. And the PCB, if you're curious about the custom PCB I sort of hinted at earlier, um, on that GitHub repository there is a link to Oshpark where I am sharing that PCB. Uh, I'll probably do another video on just assembling it just because it's kind of a unique thing. Having the SOP8 uh, package chip in the middle of the PCB with a hole cut out for it so everything will fit inside the identity chip socket. It's kind of an interesting little trick. It's also a total pain to solder. But anyways, if you're interested in that stuff, uh, check the GitHub repository. Links and all that stuff are there. And if you try any of this and you find any success with this, please let me know. I'd love to hear about it. Good luck. Have fun.